Delicious, meat nutritious, and the snack that packs a real protein punch, wonderful pistachios. Each one ounce serving has six grams of protein, giving you over 10% of your daily value and making wonderful pistachios one of the highest protein nuts out there. But perhaps more than that, I love all of the flavors they have. Their sea salt and vinegar ones are my favorite when I'm craving that flavor, but still want to keep it healthy. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Wonderful pistachios come in a variety of flavors like chili roasted, honey roasted, smoky barbecue, and jalapeno lime, to name a few. Perfect for enjoying with family or friends and taking them with you on the go. Whether you're a pistachio purist who loves cracking open every nut, or you prefer the convenience of no-shells pistachios, Wonderful Pistachios has got you covered. Grab Wonderful Pistachios and elevate your snacking game today. So fill up with a healthy snack when hunger strikes. Visit wonderfulpistachios.com to learn more. That's wonderfulpistachios.com. This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 3196, Be Better at Balancing It All, by Rachel Shankin of mindbodywise.com. And I'm your narrator, Justin Mollick, reading you articles to help bring a bit more positivity, happiness, and motivation to your day. So now let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Be Better at Balancing It All by Rachel Shankin of mindbodywise.com. Be better at balancing it all. There's a picture in this post where I'm about seven years old posing happily on a floor balance beam. Only one month before, I had been selected as the newest member of the gymnastics team. In this picture, I see a little girl beaming with pride and joy. I absolutely and completely loved the sport of gymnastics. Gymnastics consumed my every minute. When I wasn't in the gym, I was daydreaming about it. And for many of my childhood years, cartwheeling was my primary mode of transportation. It was fun, fast, and easy. Ah, the days of youth. Aside from gymnastics, although not much mattered to me besides gymnastics, I loved hopscotch and jacks and ping pong. As the years progressed, I became more serious about the sport. I was training every night of the week after school and competing every weekend. My coaches were tough, and the pressure to push the boundaries of my abilities and my fears was constant. My life, thoughts, feelings, and body were consumed by rigid rules and expectations of precision and perfection. What I realized much later in life through a lot of personal work and a yoga therapy session that integrated this realization for me was that the strict rules of the balance beam had been internalized in my psychology and became the metaphor for how I lived my life, where there was a right way and a wrong way, where timing was vital, and where every nuanced movement meant huge success or major failure. My thoughts, decisions, and choices in life left little room for freedom, creativity, or simply the idea that there are many right ways to be. Life felt, falsely, safer and clearer, moving along a self-imposed narrow mental path, much like a four-inch balance beam with little room for error. However, the freedom and fun of sloppy, fast cartwheels through open grassy fields and hotel lobbies was long gone. Gone were the days of hopscotch using random objects or rocks found on the side of the street as pieces and lopsided boards made with broken chalk. Although I looked graceful on the outside, I was robotic and rigid on the inside. Not much balance there, and the illusion of safety was long gone too. It's important to note, the gifts of the balance beam part of me have served me well. I can be organized, structured, reliable, and highly productive. They have also worked against me when needing to allow for possibility and mental flexibility, which is possibly one of the most vital keys to living a happy life. So when the occasion calls for it, I've had to learn how to access the hopscotch playing, messy cartwheeling part of myself and let the structured balance beam part take a rest. Sometimes I consciously access both of these parts and when they work together in tandem, the balance of the two creates amazing things, including a nice big exhale in my body and mind. Being able to consciously choose which part to access has taken a lot of practice. It's required that I tap into all of myself and do my inner work. Why am I sharing this story with you? Here's why. Because so many people struggle with creating balance in their lives. Maybe you do too. Remember, your internal challenges are reflected in your external challenges. For example, if you struggle with balancing work with fun, this is reflecting something out of balance that lives inside you. If you struggle like I did and sometimes still do, 
With the balance between structure and responsibility versus spontaneity and creativity, this originates from inside you too. Some core struggle or block keeps you from equilibrium in your body and your psyche. I know this is pretty deep stuff, but it's true. If you peel a few layers back, I know you'll find that is true for you too. Balance is a practice that shifts and changes just like you. It's a process. 30 second exercise. Stand on one leg. Lift the other leg straight out in front of you as high as you can. Try to stand tall on your spine. Don't lean back. Bring your arms straight up by your ears. Keep both legs straight. Continue lifting the leg that's off the ground higher. Hold this for at least 30 seconds, then lower your lifted leg. Reflect on your 30-second physical balance experience. Did you notice wobbliness? Did you eventually come to equilibrium? Maybe just as you found your center, you begin to wobble again. Maybe you fell. Body balance works the same as internal, mental, and emotional balance. It's never permanent. It's always shifting. And there's always work required to come back to equilibrium. You will wobble. You will fall out sometimes. And sometimes you will get it just right. The beauty is that when you learn what balance feels like in your body and your mind, you can more readily access it anytime under any circumstances. Have you considered the emotional impact of being out of balance? How to get to your deeper layers? How learning to balance to these parts of yourself can enhance your life, your relationships, your mental health, your attitude, your work, your appreciation for life, your mood, your success? Worth some consideration, no? For me, it has been a game changer. P.S. Keep peeling the layers and oh, the life adventure you'll have. You just listened to the post titled Be Better at Balancing It All by Rachel Shankin of mindbodywise.com and I'll be right back with my commentary. Thank you to Rachel. I could relate to that feeling of being robotic, maybe rigid on the inside where they're isn't much balance. And sometimes we don't even notice these things. So for the first 30 years of my life, at least, I think I defined myself as someone with little stress and anxiety. But reflecting, thanks to the articles we hear on this podcast, I realized things were much different than I thought. I mean, I wasn't picking my hangnails as a kid for fun. That was definitely some kind of coping with anxiety, probably. I might not have shown it a lot, but I think it was more internalized, like much of my emotions. It's interesting how we can define ourselves completely differently than reality for years, only to figure it out much, much later. And again, hopefully that's what this podcast does for you as it has for me over the years, helping us figure out the truth of what's really going on inside us. Many people go their entire lives not questioning any of this, but I think it really has the potential to make our lives even just a little bit better. So thank you to Rachel for this one. And thank you for being here and thinking about this kind of stuff along with me. I couldn't do it without you coming back to listen. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.